It's absolutely shocking that poverty remains a key issue for society to face up to in the 21st century here in Scotland. Child poverty in Scotland is an area of increasing concern. A combination of sharp increases in the cost of living, low wages and crucially ongoing changes to the social security system means that families across Scotland are struggling financially. But that is reality, both absolute poverty and relative poverty. And certainly Scottish teachers in the classroom are aware of the negative impact of poverty on young people's attainment and young people's life chances. Currently, 210,000 children in Scotland live in poverty. Worse still, independent organisations such as the Institute for Fiscal Studies predict that unless action is taken by 2020, up to 100,000 more children in Scotland will be living in poverty. Poverty is our business because it can undermine the educational and life chances of our children. Research from the Joseph Rowntree Foundation indicates that the gap in terms of achievement and attainment between children from low income and high income households starts early. By age 5, it is 10 to 13 months. Lower attainment in literacy and numeracy is linked to deprivation throughout primary school. By age 12 to 14, S2, pupils from better off areas are more than twice as likely as those from the most deprived areas to do well in numeracy. Attainment at 16, the end of S4, has risen overall, but a significant and persistent gap remains between groups. A scandalous one in five of Scotland's children are still living in poverty, and those children growing up in poverty are less likely to do well at school, and yet it's clear that the costs and financial barriers that school creates too often exclude children and put real additional burden on families. The cost of school trips, school clothing, school activities, the cost of classroom materials, all create real issues for families. Undoubtedly, many of the solutions to these problems lie well beyond the school gates, but schools can and do make a difference. There is a role for schools in addressing some of the problems faced by low-income families. One way that schools can help is by cutting the cost of the school day. So as well as doing everything we can to boost family incomes, all those involved in Scotland's education system need to do everything they can to remove those financial barriers, remove the costs that exclude and uh, mean that children don't get everything they can out of the education system. Research conducted by the Child Poverty Action Group in the past year has shown that parents living on low incomes face a number of financial challenges in meeting the costs specifically associated with their children attending school. So just what are the costs of the school day that so many families are struggling with? The following are reconstructions of interviews conducted on behalf of the Child Poverty Action Group by Dr Morag Trainer of the University of Edinburgh. Teachers surveyed by the EIS also share their perspectives on the impact of low income on children's school experiences. Because I, have, I haven't really got the money to spend £60 on a pair of school shoes, I've just been buying the cheapest pair that I can find. But they're not lasting very long because they're the cheapest pair. So they got school shoes for going back to school. And then my mum helped me in October to get them boots because it was really bad rain. So she got one of the boots and I got the other. But um, that's 40, 50 pounds as well. And that's me. I had to go and buy my son new school shoes again. I bought my younger boy them as well, but I got him the cheapest pair. And he said, they'll do you until I have the money to get you a not bad pair. But it's fine because he's in primary school, so it doesn't really matter. There's milk money, there's book money, there's other monies. And my son, he costs a lot more now. He grows like every two or three months. He's just, the cost of clothes, that's a lot more. School uniforms, school shoes, he's already been in three pairs already. Uh, trousers, I think we're in our second set of uniforms. So, yep, that all costs. And lunches. Having a bit of discount would help, and things like school uniforms and that. Because the two oldest ones, they have to wear the school uniforms, so they have to have trousers, shirt, tie, skirts, whatever. They kind of just, well, the primary school kids, 
you can throw in joggers and a black sweatshirt and they'll go to school quite happily. But the older ones, it has to look nice. So they don't get slagged off by their pals for not having the right clothes. So it's the higher end stuff. They fit in with everybody else. So I suppose things like that could be a bit cheaper. Well, we see a lot of families sharing PE kits, even just one kit, and extremes from sharing three to six items of clothing. Some kids don't even have a jacket. And if they do have a jacket, they have one to last them the entire year. And then there's the issue of clothing not fitting properly, which causes embarrassment because they don't look like their peers. I, mean, I know families get a clothing grant for kids who are starting after the summer holidays, but how is that meant to last them a full year? If I get him some decent school shoes, and I'm not saying he's getting the best, I'm not saying he's getting the name, but if he's got ones that are suitable for him and for the school, it's way above what I get from the school clothing grant. You know, you sometimes get phone calls from parents saying that they just don't have the money in respect to sending their child to school. The thing is about buses is you have to have that money in your hand every single day. I can well understand people saying that they just can't afford it. They just can't afford those two buses every morning. They may sound like a small amount, five pounds a week, but for every month and every year, that is a substantial amount. And if you have three or four children, then that's a significant deal. I had to go and pick him up one day from school because he had been sick just before lunchtime and he never had any dinner money left. I said to him, what's happening? What's going on? And he said, I'm being bullied because I'm poor and I've not got any money for a bacon roll. I know handing him ten pounds isn't the answer to everything and I'm not going to be able to do it all his life. I'm not going to be able to pay him out of situations but I just thought I can. You're in first year at high school and it's hard enough as it is. I mean, he got bullied right the way through primary school and I just thought I can't bear the thought of you being here and not enjoying it and just getting bullied because you've not got money for the bacon roll. The school's always coming up with wee trips and things like that and then you're caught out. It's not very fair that they don't give you enough notice. You know, maybe it's only two or three pounds and, and they don't really see that two or three pounds is a big issue, but when you're struggling it is. We've got a problem with them going in camps. For example, the twins that are at high school, when they were leaving primary and there was the peace at camp, there was no discount for the fact that we had two children. So for us to send both of them, it would have cost 400 odd pounds. So it ended up, well, I think, truth that the two of them kitted on, they didn't want to go. Because they knew just how expensive it was going to be for us. But could they not give us a discount or anything? We even suggested that the school try and do a a cat boot sale or something, you know, just something to raise funds so that we could all get to go cheaper. Because we're not the only ones in that boat. When it comes to the school trips, there are some kids that just aren't getting to go. They're not getting to go on the big trips and even the wee trips are a bridge too far for some families. Getting five or ten pounds off them just simply can't be done. If you've got to put away that extra couple of pounds from here and there, well, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know, it can be an issue. It's not fair on the children who are left and it's not fair on the parents who are moving heaven and earth to try and find the money somehow. So we have to make sure that schools are doing as much as they can to try and overcome these barriers that face young people from poorer backgrounds. We certainly need to recognise that schools cannot eradicate poverty more generally in society. But schools and teachers do make a difference in the lives of young people, both individually groups of young people, indeed local communities. So I'm very pleased to commend this EIS sponsored resource as part of the approach that schools might take in addressing the issues of poverty and trying to make sure that as many young people as possible in our society are given an equal chance to gain from their education.